Hello everybody, I'm Shadow Duke, and welcome to my Temple Trekking Guide. In order to do Temple Trekking, you require to do In Aid of Myrarchy and the Darkness of Hollowvale to unlock the second route. It's also recommended to do the Legacy of Sergei so that you unlock the Ivan's Flail, which is a better silver weapon against the vampires. It's also recommended to do the Branches of Darkmire to unlock Blisterwood weapons, which is even better than the Ivan's Flail. Just know that the requirements for this are pretty high. For your stats, I would recommend at least 40 plus combat for the easy and medium path, 60 plus combat for the hard path, 43 prayer so you can use your protection prayers. You can get away with lower stats, but it will be a little bit harder, and I'd recommend at least doing medium path. As for your combat gear, I'd recommend you just bring the best gear that you have. The monsters in this area are not too difficult, so it shouldn't really be that much of an issue. As an example, if you're level 50 combat, and all you can wear is rune, then go ahead and bring your rune equipment. To deal with the vampires in the event, you're going to need a blisterwood weapon, an Ivan's flail, or a silver sickle. All of these weapons will work on the juvenite vampires. If you want to kill the Virewatch, you're going to need to have at least an Ivan's flail or the blisterwood weapons. The silver sickle will not work. It's also a good idea to bring a druid pouch or an Ouroboros pouch. The Ouroboros pouch has infinite charges where the druid pouch does not. If you don't feel like bringing these, your follower will invoke the gas for you, but it will take a while, so it's not recommended. It's also a good idea to bring a sack of cabbages to feed the sick people at the campsite, one to two prayer potions for defense purposes, and a salve amulet to deal extra damage to the undead. You can also bring a familiar in this event, so if you want to bring a beast of burden or a combat familiar, you're welcome to do so. And lastly, you'll have some choices between hard, medium, and easy followers. If you look on the screen, you'll see the benefits and negatives of using each follower. If you want to maximize your rewards, I would recommend using the hard followers. Also be aware, the more you use followers, the more they'll level up, they'll get stronger, and they'll unlock new abilities to use. Now let's talk about some of the rewards you can get from this minigame. On screen you'll see a number of rewards that you can get just from completing this minigame. The amount you'll get of each reward is dependent on which reward ticket you have, whether it's blue for easy, yellow for medium, or red for hard. The most notable rewards here, at least for the Iron Man, are going to be the Rune Essence, the Bowstring, and the Sharks. This is going to be one of the fastest ways to get these supplies, at least early on. As for the rest of the rewards here, if you look on your notice board and then click the rewards tab, you'll see a bunch of numbers. These numbers are going to be the total level of all of your followers, and you'll start passively unlocking these rewards. They'll unlock shortcuts, a minigame teleport that gets added on to your game's necklace to teleport to temple tracking easier, and the full construction outfit to give you bonus experience while training construction. To start this area, you have two locations, the one in Berg de Rot, and the one north of the Morton Swamp. All you have to do is click on the notice board and choose which follower you want to use. You can refer to these maps to find the location better. To start things off, let's go over the bog event. When you first enter the room, search the spiny bush to get a branch. When you have the branch, click on it and then click on the mud. Once you do that, two things will happen. You'll either find firm mud or you'll find soft mud. If you find firm mud, you will automatically walk onto that space and then you can continue on the next piece of mud. If it's soft, you will not walk on it and then you have to try a different area. If you do end up walking on the soft mud, you'll end up falling in and then you'll swim out. This does end up taking longer than if you were to use the stick on the mud, so make sure you do that instead of just guessing. Next up we have the bridge event. For this event, you need to chop down three trees to get three logs. When you have the logs, use the logs on the bridge to repair the bridge and then walk over. During this event, there is a chance for three undead lumberjacks to spawn. If you kill them, they'll have a 1 in 10 chance to drop lumberjack outfit piece which gives you a bonus experience when woodcutting. It's not always guaranteed that they'll spawn so it might be hard to get all the pieces. Also note that when the lumberjacks spawn, they'll drop planks when they die. So you can use those to repair the bridge instead of chopping down the trees. Next up is the campsite event. In this area, there are five campers that are sick. Their status will be sick, very sick, ghastly, and dead. The way to solve this puzzle is to feed them food to revive their health. You can either do this by giving them your own food, or by killing the snails, cooking the meat, and then feeding it to them. 
This is where the cabbage bag comes in handy. Instead of using your food that you eat, you can empty the cabbage sack and then use the cabbages to feed the campers. If you don't feed them in time, they will end up dying and turning into ghasts, and then you'll have to kill them. Once all the campers are revived, go ahead to the next room. Next up, we have the grotto event. In this event, you must jump over the bridge and then right click on the nature spirit to get blessed with water. Once you're blessed, as quickly as you can, click on the fires to extinguish them. The faster you click on the fires, the faster you'll extinguish them since there's no cooldown on when you can put out the next fire. Once you finish putting out the fires, jump over the bridge again and then run north to go to the next area. Up next we have the river swing event. For this event, search the tree to the east to get three strings. Then click on them once you have all three to combine it into a rope. Once you have the rope, click on the branch to lasso it to the tree. Then click on the rope to swing across. Then proceed north to end the event. Now that we're done with the puzzle events, from here on out it's going to be combat events. For the first event we have the snails. There's nothing special here, just pray range if needed, and then kill all the snails. Then we have the snake event. Just like the snails, nothing special here. Just pray magic if you're taking too much damage, kill all the snakes. When you do kill the snakes, you can also skin them to take the snake leather, to make snake armor leather, or sell it in the GE. Next up is Nail Beasts. Just like the snakes and the snails, nothing too special going on here, just pray melee if needed, and pick up the Talon Charms because those give you a lot of summoning experience when you use them. The Talon Beasts can be a little bit difficult to kill. They do have a lot of defense, so if you need a safe spot, just go to the east below the lake and you can kill them there without taking much damage. Once they're all dead, proceed to the exit. Next up we have some ghasts. For this event you need to be carrying your druid pouch or your Ouroboros pouch in order to invoke the ghasts. You cannot hit them while they're in their ghost form. Once you invoke them, you'll be able to deal damage to them. If you don't have your pouch with you, your follower will invoke them for you, but that will take time so it's not recommended to do that way. It will slow you down a lot. If you don't have any charges in your druid pouch, you can use your silver sickle to bless the logs in your area to fill your pouch up. Once all the ghasts are killed, proceed to the exit. Next up is the Kraken event. For this event, a short cutscene will occur where you see four tentacles come up and then the head. If needed, protect from melee and then kill all four tentacles first and then kill the head. The head will be immune to any damage once he reaches zero and will not die until all the tentacles are killed. Once you finish killing the Kraken, click on the boat to proceed to the next area. Now it's time to head to the graveyard. For this event, you're going to want to run around and gather the aggro of all the skeletons in the area. Once you have the aggro, you're going to want to run into the center and make sure that the skeletons are up against the fence or inside of the fence. You're going to click on the coffin and then it's going to do an area of effect damage one tile around the fence and kill all the skeletons in the area. Once you've done that, you'll have one more charge to do the blast. So, make sure all the skeletons are up against the fence again, and then use it. Assuming you've killed them all, proceed to the exit. If you didn't kill them all by the second blast, you will have to kill them yourself. Just be aware they do get stronger each time you use the coffin. So make sure you do it in two tries. Next up we have the Shade event. In this event, to the north you'll see three buildings with the doors closed, and shades attacking those doors. If they hit those doors five times, they'll break the doors and kill the villagers. You want to try to avoid that, so attack them before they could break the door, and they'll aggro on you, and you won't have to worry about that anymore. Once you've done that, go ahead and kill all the shades in this area, and then proceed to the next location. One of the strategies for this area is actually to aggro all the shades and then run completely south. For the most part, the shades should go into a single file line, so that way only one shade attacks you at a time. Up next we have the Juvenites. These are vampires, so they could only be hurt with silver weaponry. So you can use the silver sickle, the Ivan's flail, silver bolts, or blister wood weapons. If you try to attack them with any other type of weapon, it will not work. 
Once they reach low enough health, they'll disappear into a cloud of dust and fly away. Once they're all dead, go ahead to the next room. And finally, for the last combat event, we have the Vire Watch. These are stronger versions of the Juvenite, so they cannot be hurt with the Silver Sickle. You have to use at least an Ivan's Flail, or even better, a Blisterwood weapon. If you're doing this on the hard mode, they might be a little bit difficult to kill for lower levels, so it might be one that you need to skip. Once you've killed the last Vire Watch, click on the fence gate to the north to leave the area. And last but not least, you'll have a bonus room. In this room, there'll be a man that you can talk to to get a free boost. Once you've finished talking to him and get the boost, you can leave the area and proceed to the next zone. And now with that, you now know everything you need to know in order to complete temple trekking. So if you found this video helpful in any way, please leave a like, comment on other guides you want to see, and subscribe to see more content in the future from me and from Mandolin. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.